TNA Impact in Reverse. This week we're going to be focusing on, you may guess by the shirt, the Young Bucks who at that time was known as Generation Me. Now they debuted with the company back in January 14th, 2010 and they're kind of one of the lost great tag teams because they obviously achieved way more success in Ring of Honor so a lot of people kind of forget uh, that they were even in TNA Impact but I'm going to tell you exactly why they were historically relevant in TNA Impact when they were there. So I will start off by saying their best match, in my opinion, and yeah, you can debate me all you want about Full Metal Mayhem, that's fine, but in my opinion, the best match they ever had was Bound for Glory 2010, that's October 10th, 2010, real easy to remember, and to throw in your GWN machine against Motor City Machine Guns, that was Shelby and Chris Saban. This match obviously was incredible, even to this day, this match is incredible to watch. But it really laid the groundwork for the tag team that we now know as the Young Bucks. Just that high flying, high energy, the selling in this match was fantastic I thought. And the crowd was going crazy. This, by the way, this was the opening match, believe it or not, I'm bound for glory that year. This thing was absolutely insane. Like I said, throwing your GWM machine, this one definitely stands the test of time. And really a fantastic preview. Uh, to the future, like I said, that the Young Bucks would end up enjoying with Ring of Honor. So before I get into why they matter in the history of TNA Impact, I will say that mm, they had kind of a throwaway storyline with Tara. Unfortunately, the, the two brothers were supposed to have a feud with each other. They did end up having a match versus each other. Uh, Max Buck did beat Jeremy Buck uh, in that match itself, but the storyline kind of ended up going nowhere which is one of the reasons that contributed to them leaving the company in July of 2011. Just obviously, the company, for whatever reason, just couldn't see how good these guys really were, uh, regardless of how good that Bound for Glory and, like I said, the other matches against Motor City Machine Gun were, and they truly were. I'm sure the main reason for them leaving the company was their win-loss record. Now, they had 42 total matches in TNA Impact, like I said, from 20, early 2010. To late 2011 42 matches they won seven had one draw and lost 35 so historically speaking why they're significant is because they have believe it or not the lowest winning percentage as a tag team with more than 20 matches in TNA impact history that's 16% believe it I couldn't believe it when I saw it myself but that's why I had to do this video they won 16% of their matches in their time at TNA Impact. You're telling me a tag team of this caliber was just that misused? So obviously you can see why they left the company uh, just short or just, you know, short of two years with them. Um, although of note, they did come back for a, a one night only tag team tournament that was in March of 2013. So their contribution to the TNA Impact history and lineage is that they will forever be known as the lowest winning tag team in TNA Impact history. Unbelievable, I know, uh, and obviously you can see why they uh, chose to depart the company. So this was Generation Me's time in TNA Impact. Boom. Hey, Taxman here. Did you like that video? If you did, make sure you throw a like on it. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if there's somebody or something that you want us to spotlight in the next episode, please make sure you leave a comment. Once again, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and tune in next time for another episode of TNA Impact in Reverse. Boom.